Jamie Porter, professor of history at Virginia College in Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm about to talk to you about a story that's very little known outside of the area of Charleston, but I think it's very important, and that is the story of the unsolved murder of attorney George A. Payton. Our story begins on May the 26th, 1929, where attorney George A. Payton was born right here in Charleston. He was born, into a, was born into a family that lived in the Union Heights area of North Charleston. He attended Burke High School where he graduated in 1949. But because of his family's income, he had the will but lacked the way to attend college. So he joined the United States Air Force where during the Korean conflict he was honorably discharged in 1953. Not long after that, he entered South Carolina State College with a double major where he graduated in 1955 and he taught for several years at Austin High School in Somerville, South Carolina and at the Columbus, El El Columbus Street Elementary School in downtown Charleston. Following that, in 1962, he decided to get his law degree from South Carolina State College. Following that, he began a law practice where his clients were mostly poor people, both black and white, which was an amazing feat for that time in a place like Charleston. But in 1968, he decided to do something extraordinary. He ran for Congress at a time when there were no black legislators, elected legislators in the state of South Carolina at all, with the exception of representatives from Lincolnville, which was a predominantly black town. He ran, to top that off, he ran against one of South Carolina's most powerful politicians, L. Mendel Rivers, who had held his congressional seat since 1941. What type of campaign did George Payton run? Here was some of his platform. This, this, what you're about to hear is from a pamphlet that George Payton wrote in regard to some of his beliefs. I believe that every man, woman, and child deserves the best quality of medical care possible. I do not believe that money should be a prerequisite for medical services. Therefore, I favor expanding Social Security legislation to the extent that all medical expenses of all citizens should be covered. And who did he intend to represent? I will offer imaginative leadership, leadership not for Negroes, leadership not for whites, but for all people who have to work for a living. This kind of stuff was way ahead of his time. And not only did he, he lost, of course, in the election that was held on June the 11th, 1968, but he also ran again in 1974 for a congressional seat. This time it was representing the, both Charleston and Georgetown counties in South Carolina. This is from a speech that he made in Georgetown on December the 3rd, 1974 that was covered in the Charleston News and Courier the next day. I'm interested in people issues that affect the lives of all, old and young, black and white, rich and poor. We need people of good will to come together and form a coalition of conscience, a vanguard with the esprit de croix to stand up for candidates that will protect the rights of people. With the building of a coalition of mutual respect and cooperation among the people of these two counties, we can change the issues from special interests to those that represent the needs of the people. Whoa! Now this was pretty advanced stuff for 1968 and 1974. As a matter of fact, Eugene Frazier, who was a friend of Attorney Payton, wrote about him in this book, uh, in this book called from segregation to integration, the making of a black policeman, okay, which is his story of his life as a policeman. And here were his comments on George Payton's elections. It said, well, to say that I deeply believe that had Payton lived a longer life, he would have mellowed out and become a brilliant lawyer. I believe that Payton had that special vision and courage that black, many black leaders before his time, his time possessed. On several occasions he would say, how long does the white man expect the black man to wait before he decides to grant us the rights that the Constitution guarantees all citizens? Some of the local leaders of the community, blacks and whites, were quietly saying that Peyton was in too big of a hurry and was going about things the wrong way. 
Whoever took that view would also have to recall Dr. Martin Luther King's trials and tribulations and ask themselves, was Dr. King wrong in wanting equality and justice for all citizens, regardless of race and national origin? Mr. Fraser posed a very good question. Well, Fenton was a very popular figure within the African American community. Then at 2 p.m. on Tuesday, March the 18th, 1975 at his law office on 65 Spring Street, downtown Charleston. A man who, refer, who identified himself as James Walker entered his office. And while Peyton was on the phone to a man by the, by, uh, with a man by the name of Job Dowling, the uh, man asked the secretary uh, if Mr. Peyton was in, and he said, and she said yes. And so he asked if he could use the restroom, and, she said, and the secretary said yes. Well, the man went back to Mr. Payton's office. Now, it is disputed whether the secretary heard shots or whether he used a silencer and then there was a thud following afterwards. But in either case, Mr. Payton was shot and he left the room. According to Job Dowling, the last man who spoke to him on the phone, his last words to him was a greeting that he often gave to everyone. Hello, buddy. Within hours, the black radio station WPAL offered a reward for Peyton's killer, which increased greatly over a series of hours, and the black community really took matters hard. That Saturday, March the 22nd, 1975, the Charleston Chronicle reported that over 10,000 black people came to see George, Fu George Peyton drive his last miles. And the pictures from that that was posted by one of his granddaughters shows a virtual sea of black in the city of Charleston on the day of Peyton's funeral. Well, for many years the case went unsolved until very recently his granddaughter, Angel, uh, Angel Peyton, has recently decided to go to the police and has had the case reopened. And it's with great hope that eventually this is done. But to this day, the name of George Payton is greatly respected in the city of Charleston. Now, as for who killed him, his identity remains unclear. But I did some research on that. And the, uh, the March the 20th, 1975 edition of the Charleston News and Courier had uh, this drawing that's kind of hard to see here of the suspect. He was described as a relatively tall, slender, dark-skinned male wearing a cap. And here's a newspaper headline from the, from the, day, from the day after George Payton was shot to death. Here you see the headline regarding these events, which is very unfortunate. And as a matter of fact, uh, his granddaughter Tina Payton Johnson has also posted a lot of pictures and articles about him on her Facebook page. So as it stands right now, his uh, granddaughter Angel Payton has, excuse me, his daughter Angel Payton has gone to the Charleston Police Department to reopen the case and see that after all these years this case has been solved. Well, that's still pending as we speak. Now, a number of people, when a, a number of people in discussing George Payton have said, yeah, well, you know, he needs to really be recognized. We really have to salute that brother for all the good he did. Well, the best salute that we can give to George Payton is to see to it that justice is done in this case. Also, a lot of people say, well, you know, we don't have leaders like George Payton anymore. Well, to a large degree, this is true. But the best way to deal with that situation is for those of us who know of these things, tell the young about these things so that they can be inspired to follow in the footsteps of such great leaders. Now for more on this story, I would encourage you also to read uh, the book From Segregation to Integration, The Making of a Black Policeman, a True Story by Eugene Fraser Sr. that contains a chapter on the George Payton case. This is Damon Fordham talking about the unsolved murder of George A. Payton Jr.